Oh my goodness. Let's get into this, man. Here we go. Everybody's been asking me about what's been up with Erica Badu and Yo Man Three Stacks. <laughs> man, I mean, that's like probably one of the top. I think I thought it'd been covered pretty much already. Because Everybody and their mama was like wondering why they didn't get married and all of this stuff. And they was like, man, I thought they would be married and they like the perfect couple, both of them weird. And everybody, oh man, she ruined three stacks' career and neither one of them really talk about it. I'm like, that's why people are so, I guess, attached to it because it's not like 50 stories. It's not. Somebody else coming out, yeah, man, I was dead. It was a nightmare. <laughs> you know, you don't have any of those guys come, coming out making those statements. But everyone felt like they were two peas in the pie because they both were weird. You know, um, it was a difficult time because... They did a song, I remember they did a song called Hello, and everybody was like, oh man, you know, they had their first child, it was each one of them's first child when they had seven, when they got together and they met, like in 2004, 2005, around that time, and you've seen Three Stacks come out, and he was all looking like, you know, big boy, you know, he's in his Atlanta Braves jersey, you know, he's playing you know, pimp hats, you know, Dobbs hats, whatever, you know, like, he was just a regular dude, you know, riding the caddy, but the thing about him is he was always different, you know, um, his thing is he was always the different type of actor, I mean, uh, artist, and when you look at him and, like, around uh, I think like man all these people were like clamoring about those two and when they met it was like an instant energy you know because what people get wrong is people think Erica Badu changed him which is not true he was already in a transition and people didn't know it he was studying and decided he's cutting out he cut out like meat. Uh, he cut out like he was eat, eating just plants and all this stuff. He he went uh, took a oath, uh, you know, of celibacy. You know, like he was not was restraining from having sex. He was trying to get all these toxins out to make himself open. You know, for the next person he's gonna be with, it's gonna be his wife. So his abstinence that he was doing and, and you know, and restraining from all this, this was before he met Erica. He didn't do this for Erica. He was already doing these things. So when people start asking questions about, oh, what was he doing there? What was he doing here? And this thing here, and then, that don't look right. And this don't look right. I'm like, dude, you have no idea what you're talking about because he was already doing these things. So when you try to compare what someone has been doing in the past and then when they meet somebody just because you didn't see it, you know, you can't really argue it. But this is when she met him and she was fascinated that he was going down his path because she was already on a path that was similar to his on her own journey and they started exchanging ideals and information she was more in tune with the israelites and informing him more to his knowledge so they had a lot to learn from each other you know and she was more under the uh dr malachi york aka master teacher she was more under his philosophy and his belief of uh, nuwabians and she was in that mindset of 
you know, Israelitism and and everything else. But to me, it's not an ism at all. You know, she was awakening him to a lot, you know, more information to take in, and his eyes was just blown. So he was already on this path, freeing himself from what people think is the regular ideals of fashion and I, you know, all these false ideals was, you know, gone. So they were able to learn. So those first couple of years, they're learning each other and they're getting along and, you know, it's a relationship. They're in love. Then after about two and a half years, there's a, a project coming out, you know, um, Outcast is touring, doing shows, and they got Goody Mob, and Andre was supposed to be there. Now, at the time, she's pregnant with uh, Seven, their first child, a son, and she's becomes, you know, like a pregnant woman becomes, and she wants him to try to make himself more available more often than just on his own leisure when he chooses to make himself available. Like, oh, I'm available now because I have available time. You got to make the sacrifices to be a father. You know, you got to say, hey, I can't do this today. You know, my family has to come first. And he wasn't doing as she felt. He felt like, okay, he feels like he's free. Now he's running and she's not going to be the sit-at-home wife with all the babies while you run around and do whatever you want type of thing. So even though with all the teachings and all the, the the journey they're on, the lifestyle you're leading and the places that you were, I mean, the business that you were in, it takes constant work because if you don't have that constant bond, what you're going to do is you're going to end up negating some of the things that have happened in your life and then you're going to lose your way on the path. It happens, I've seen it happen to some of the strongest people in the game. You know, uh, you look at Steph and Aisha. They both were Christianed out and they went into a, a bottomless pit of just, <laughs> you know, being you know surrounded by these things. You would never see them get tattooed. Tattoos was out of their, what their religion was about. And now they were believers. Now they got what? tattoos, they're cursing, they never would use profanity. Now you're seeing them sway a little bit from where they were supposed to be. And it happens. And you got to recenter yourself. You got to get back with your faith, whatever your belief in, you got to get back strong. So you can get back to the center, because if you're not back at the center, you're not going to be able to correct anything that you're doing in the uh, process of getting your life together. So swinging back towards Erica and Andre, they start having major problems amongst each other. Their relationship started to fall apart and go down a spiraling path of destruction because arguments started to ensue. And then they had a lot of different things transpire at the time where everybody who's in that facility, who's in that area, they got to know exactly what's transpiring there at that time. So you're looking at Erica, who's getting more violent, more like, like not violent, but very cold and you know, like very demanding. And Andre is a is like a, a flowering spirit where he wants to, you know, just explore and learn to do different things and they started to resent each other, you know, and they needed to take a break. So they took a break during the relationship, even though they carried on as husband and wife without a ceremony and and Erica's too much, she's very strong willed. And she was the strong person in the relationship. Why right? he was more the docile, laid back, centered guy. But then he became assertive, you know, like wanting to do other things. And, you know, 
and there was rumors of him dating another woman, you know, and he was, you know, so it was the same things that you, you had, had you guys not had these changes, was starting to show each other, starting to show up in your new life, that you're going to the same things going down the road. So that started to go down. Then you hear the song, Sorry, Miss Jackson. And when Sorry, Miss Jackson came out, um, that was in like 2000, I want to say four or five. I could be wrong. I don't know when the album lost. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that song was out forever. And it's hard to put a year on it. But anyway, Sorry Miss Jackson comes out. And it's like talking about Erica's but whose mom who always wanted to see them get married. You know, she loved, you know loved Andre, wanted to, he promised that he was going to marry her and all this stuff. And, you know, he broke up with Erica because he couldn't deal with her possessive ways and her cold and bitterness and the attacks and all this stuff. So, you know, the song is about, you know, just that period, you know, so never meant to make your daughter cry. Then it became a hit song that was played everywhere. Erica wasn't too happy with the song. You know, uh, because one, this is a hit song that everybody's gonna be playing. And the song is really about her, even though he never really kind of explained it was about her, but it was. And Big Boy's lyrics in there. If you listen to Big Boy's lyrics, he's talking about like, don't use your, you know, like, be in there and stop using your kid as a meal ticket. She had a problem with that line. Because Erica, you know, Erica Badu is an artist. And that's one thing artists do is they listen to what's actually said in the song. You might not, you might not believe it, but artists, more than anybody, they listen to what's in a record or what's on a song more than any other artist in the world. So... That is the absolute truth, absolute facts, and nobody I know is going to dispute that. They have more control over, like, they can block out all the music, all the backgrounds, and just hear the lyric. An artist can do that better than anybody. So, after the song, she wanted to ask Big Boy, you know, like, what do you mean by that? use the kid as a meal ticket. No, I don't need him to take, I got my own money. I take care of myself. I've never asked Andre for no money. So she really upset. One thing that he's going to do is take care of his son. He's not going to be an absent father. I'm not going to have an absentee father. If you're going to be a father, you're going to support your son. He's supposed to pay what he's supposed to pay. And that's my business with Andre. And he was like, I was just saying that in general. And he was, like, not generalizing it to her. He's saying in general, like, women should you It wasn't about Erica, is what he was clarifying with the lyrics. So they were back cool and, you know, back on that point. But, yeah, she she did check him. Like, it, Erica's not going to sit there and just take some. So, yeah, they got to a point where they were balanced. And they were on the same wavelength with each other as far as that they're going to be respectful. And that was going to, uh, you know, move forward from there. They were going to go ahead and, you know, move forward with all this stuff going on. And my goodness, uh, I think in, you know, she mentioned Andre and you know, saying that because of work, and she was talking about it all the time. And it's like one of the songs that she plays a lot. And that's uh, Other Side of the Game. That was like back in like, what was that, 97, I think? When she was like, when she talking about me and baby got this situation about the, you know, he got this complex application. 
and she's like, uh, like I ain't saying that this life don't work, but it's me and baby that he hurt. So it was like back then, you know. So she was writing it back then, ninety-seven. Go back and listen to I think what was it, other side of the game, and I'm I probably got the lyrics wrong, you know, but. Go see if you can listen to other side of the game. And she was talking about Andre and what he did in that situation. So let me go ahead and get up and get this day going. I want to say thank you guys who supported the page and definitely hitting up the the Patreon. The Carcino for Life Patreon is on fire right now. And to, today we got more coming. So get ready. Happy 4th of July, people. <laughs> Happy 4th of July. I'm out. Deuces.